Remember, there are some resources that cannot be created in a VPC. For example, S3 buckets, DynamoDB, SNS, SQS. Those are examples of resources that cannot be created in a VPC. Now, imagine that you want resources in your VPC to privately connect to these resources like your S3 buckets, DynamoDB. When we talk about private connection, we're talking about the fact that we don't want that traffic leaving from the VPC to go over the internet, but we want that connection from the VPC to those resources created out of the VPC. We want that to traverse over the AWS local network. That is simply where the concept of VPC endpoints comes in. So in this video, we're going to be talking about VPC endpoints in AWS. Now, let's say, for example, you hosted some resources in here. So you hosted some of your resources in the private subnet and you hosted some of your resources in the public subnet. Now, let's say you want this instance in this public subnet. Normally, this instance is going to have a public IP address, but you might not want that instance to connect to this S3 bucket over the internet. Because if you want that to happen over the internet, the traffic is going to flow through the internet gateway, then to this S3 bucket. You know, one thing about the internet is the fact that the internet could be very slow. And besides that, the internet is very, very insecure. Now, for that reason, or for this reason, you might not want to make use of the internet. That is simply where you can be able to make use of a VPC endpoint. So when you have a VPC endpoint, a VPC endpoint is simply going to help you to ensure that resources in your VPC can privately connect to resources created out of your VPC. So for example, if you want this EC2 instance to privately connect to maybe an S3 bucket, right, that is created out of a VPC, that can be done through the use of a VPC endpoint. Now, let's say, for example, you want this instance in the public subnet to privately connect to maybe DynamoDB that is created out of a VPC. What is going to happen is you are going to make use of an endpoint. So you're going to have an endpoint that is going to help you to establish that private connection to your DynamoDB database created out of the VPC. Now, you should understand that there are two types of VPC endpoints. We have um, the gateway endpoint, and we also have the interface endpoint. Now, guys, the gateway endpoint simply makes use of a route table. And with the gateway endpoint, you can simply connect to just some few resources, like, for example, S3 buckets, DynamoDB, SES. Those are examples of the few resources that can actually make use of the gateway endpoint. But now, with the gateway endpoint, it makes use of a route in a route table. So if you want resources in a particular subnet of your VPC to be able to connect to resources created out of your VPC using gateway endpoint, then one thing you need to do is you need to update the route table of the subnet where those resources are. Now, the gateway endpoint is free and it's not as secure as the interface endpoint. Now, with the interface endpoint, it's kind of like a, a little bit different with the fact that when you are to make use of an interface endpoint, it is powered by a private link. And when you actually create an interface endpoint, AWS is going to create something called an ENR. AWS is going to create something called an ENI. And that ENI is just a virtual network card. So AWS is going to create virtual network card. And it is with that virtual network card that resources in your VPC are going to use to privately talk to resources created out of your VPC. So guys, you're going to understand that in the future. Now, one other thing you should also know with the interface endpoint is the fact that the interface endpoint is 
pretty much secured with the security group. So an interface endpoint is secured with a security group. Okay, so it makes it to be more secure as compared to the gateway endpoint. In the future, we're going to talk more about what the gateway endpoint does and also what the interface endpoint actually does.